Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope you're all doing well. I hope that you enjoyed the holidays. And uh, yeah, I am joining you outside. I thought I would share this beautiful snow that we got and talk about the astrology aspect of this. For those who are new, this is the astrology portion. If you're not interested, you can look down below for the timestamp and move on to the tarot. So this is January 4th through the 17th, 2021. And yep, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so the first week, we have a lot of earth energy, a lot of fixed energy. So it, we're going to feel a bit like, you know, we're kind of um, walking through mud, right? Deep mud, kind of sludging our way through things. But, you know, the good thing about it is that it is that fixed energy, right? So it's that determination, right? That willpower. We're... Um, and that, you know, strength that we've been cultivating is going to come in handy because, uh, well, first we have Mars moving into Taurus, right, on the 6th. At the same time, we have a fixed T-square forming. It's exact the next day. And that is uh, Saturn, in a, or Jupiter, I'm sorry. And Saturn, it's basically in the mix, right? In Aquarius, the Moon in Scorpio, and Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus is retrograde still. The very end of this, it does turn direct. So that's nice. Uh, but, you know, this is going to, you know, we're, we're going to be running into problems probably with whatever projects we're working on. We could be feeling some anxiety, that sort of thing. This is where, you know, that Leo energy, that strength energy is really going to come in handy. Uh... Adding to that energy, the next day we have Mercury entering Aquarius. Now, I, you know, that is adding to that uh, fixed energy, but Mercury is very happy in Aquarius, right? This is that forward thinking. And I think that, you know, looking into the future, right? And um, that, you know, when we have a square, what's missing is what the, is the answer, right? And that's that strength, that Leo energy, you know, getting into your heart, you know, really having that belief in yourself, in your mission, in your ability to succeed, putting your head down and, you know, powering through, right? That pulling on that inner well of strength that we have been cultivating. Uh, we also have, you know, helping with that breakthrough energy is Venus and Capricorn. And, that, yeah, Venus comes in a little bit later too. But... You know, I'm also seeing this as, you know, the time that all this fixed and earth energy that we're, we're getting, right, that Venus and Capricorn is that earth energy. Uh, we have been having our dreams up in space, right? It's been up in the ethers. And I see this time as where we're starting to really get it grounded into reality. We really start, you know, that Mars moving into Taurus is helping give us a little bit of traction, right? So, the next week, we have this new moon in Capricorn. It is the first new moon of the year, and or the new, first, you know, any moon of the year. Okay. You know what I mean. <laughs> it's at 23 degrees of... Uh, Capricorn and it is conjunct Pluto this is Hierophant this is Hierophantrix because a very interesting piece of this is the Sabian symbol and before I say what it is I want to go back to the Sabian symbol for that Jupiter Saturn conjunction because I didn't talk about it. Because there was so much. It was so long anyway. I was like. <laughs> but it's an old Adobe mission in California. It was for the conjunction. And you know. This is like the environment. Right. For for spiritual evolution. Which is what I'm seeing. With this new moon in Capricorn. Conjunct Pluto. Right. 
the Sabian symbol for this new moon in Capricorn is a woman entering a convent. What? <laughs> so yeah, this is where we commit. This is where, you know, it's like there's no going back. Are you committed? Because it's like either we commit and we see this all the way through or we fall off the track somewhere and get left behind, right? So this is leveling up. This is, you know, teacher status. This is where we become the teacher. Uh, it's, it's really beautiful. So in addition to that, we do have Mars squaring Saturn, right? This continued evolution of the divine masculine. We have Uranus making a lot of aspects here. We have Jupiter squaring Uranus, Mercury squaring Uranus, and then we have Venus trining, trining Uranus, right? So Venus is the way that, you know, this, this pleasure, it's, it's even career oriented, right? It's the divine feminine at any rate, helping us find the ease, the purpose in whatever change, whatever surprise comes our way with all of this, because no doubt there will be. And then the next day, we have Uranus turning direct. And then that, after that, everything's direct. Everything's direct. <laughs> It'll be amazing. But so this is kind of, you know, I feel like you know, of course, it's not like everything's smooth sailing after this, but this is kind of one of the trickier uh, time frames. I think we're we're gonna see a lot of craziness. Yeah, and this is coinciding with the inauguration in the U.S. So, should be interesting. Become the witness, right? <laughs> just watch with curiosity and just know it's all happening for our highest good. This is all just part of the evolution process. So, yeah, Let's see what the cards have to say about it. Hello, Aquarius. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday season. And welcome, welcome back. My name is Christiana. I will be performing this reading for you today. Regarding the energies that will be affecting you during the time frame of January 4th through the 17th. Happy New Year! <laughs> now I'm wanting to warn everyone that it does it started off a, li a little shaky, a little shaky. But um, for almost everybody, I've been seeing quite a difference between the first week and the second week in this time period. So see what comes up for you yeah look at that the mask and thanatos wow thanatos is death energy right this is like removing the mask hmm we have the siren at the bottom of the deck moving the mask deep change deep change all right Answering the call, hearing. Okay, let's see what we got here. The heart of the reading is the empty room. This is potential. Okay, We've got the mirror as what you're consciously moving toward. Below, ooh, the fault line. Wow, look at that. I mean, this is, <clears throat> we have the sword in reverse, right? This is like that inner truth. Mm, the prayer, the queen. I mean, like this is a very colorful deck. And look at this. And I'm not so much getting, you know, yeah, there could be a little bit of, you know, things are just kind of, um, 
unknown, right? There's this, you know, we are in the midst of winter, right? This kind of gray thing, but also just looking at the facts, right? There's this stoicism. It says deep look into the self, right? We see this, the fault line here. And we see this lightning bolt. which leads to light. Interesting. Let's see what, and of course with the mirror, this is, you know, that looking at the self. Okay. Let's see what we get to go along with this. Ooh, that was really fast and flew out of there. Hmm. Wow. We've got Temperance and Six of Fire in reverse. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really getting this inner alchemy. There might be a, a bit of impatience on your part, but I mean, like you're Move, you're you're consciously moving towards the mirror. So let's see what comes out. We'll keep that in mind. Seven of Winds. That is the Moon in Aquarius. War. Yeah, that fiery energy. Right. That was all fire that came out there. Low nine of tides. Hmm. Let's see where everything is here. Let's move that up. Okay. This would be, of course, war here is the emperor. In a traditional tarot, this is uh, the Nine of Cups. Okay. Air element, the devil. This is what you're thinking about, what you're communicating. Not sure exactly how I feel about that yet. Justice. In the fire element, this is um, what you're working on in your spiritual life. This could be where you're taking action, uh, creative efforts. Sorry, I'm getting like, it's interesting that we have up here, it's like all major arcana, right? This top line so far. Okay. Oh my goodness, the sun. This is in the earth element. This is what's going on in your day-to-day -day practical life. So that's nice. Hmm. I'm getting like that ego, right? Since we've got the mirror here, we've got the emperor, right? There's this looking at your identity. Hmm. Okay. And four of tides here in the water element. And this is your emotions. This is your relationships with others. Okay. Past. Jester of fire. This would be the page of wands in a traditional deck. This is four of cups, of course. And the future. The eight of fire. Eight of wands. Okay. I like that there. We have love at the bottom of the deck. That would be the lovers in a traditional deck. So yeah, this is a pretty uh, powerful time for you. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more here. I'm gonna have to 
move it. It's a little bit off center and I can't stand it, but I'll do that off, off screen. You won't have to watch me. <laughs> Just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm going to be shifting it. All right. Let's get the general energy of this time period. The general energy. January 4th through the 17th for Aquarius. January 4th through the 17th, please, Spirit. General energy. More here. General energy, please, for Aquarius. Oh, yep. Sleeping Beauty's Dream. Interesting. Okay, and then we have Elixir of Life at the bottom of the deck, number 15. All right, so this is definitely relating to that devil energy. Okay. Underneath that, I just have to say, we do have White Rose of Hope. And I always get this very star kind of energy from that. Hmm. We do have the star here. This nine of tides. All right. Now, card to represent your energy. This is a card to represent... Aquarius, please, in the time frame of January 4th through the 17th. Our card to represent Aquarius. Card to represent Aquarius, please, January 4th through the 17th. Bob Dylan. We have Vasily Kandinsky at the bottom of the deck. And this, is, you know, it says transcend systems to find spirit. Hear music through sight, begin with a dot. And that transcends, transcend systems to find spirit. I'm really like getting that here, right? With that sleeping beauty's dream. And then we have, yeah. This is beautiful. Nostalgia is for two-time losers. Don't mistake that mansion on the hill for paradise. Darkness may be falling, but we're not there yet. Right? Um, for me, that's meaning like, yeah, there's going to be a bit of uh, drama, we'll say. But it's like, you know, we're not there yet. That hope, right? We can we can turn this around. Moving forward, nostalgia is for two-time losers. Very Aquarian, very forward thinking. But there's also this, um, a respect for the past as well, right? He's a folk singer, which is... Uh, often associated with telling stories from the past. Wisdom as well. I mean, all that brown, there's, it's very grounded, right? Saturn is in your sign. So it's kind of like, that's really, has you grounded, has you thinking about the future, right? Ready to fight. And that music, right? The all uh, this music here, really, whether or not you play musicians or are musical, it's like you're creating. You know, music kind of fends off the darkness. So I feel like music is going to be important to you during this time. All right, guys. So this is. A super interesting reading. Um, you know, I'm not even, I was like sitting here going, where do I begin with this? <laughs> right? Well, I'm going to go with this line right here. Right? Because, you know, around it, we see a whole lot of color. 
right? But right here, and even this, like, what you're moving towards, what's on the, you know, this, this right here, it's like on the surface of you, there's not a whole lot going on, right? Just you, because I feel like this is you, right? Moon in Aquarius, and this is you, the emperor, which, you know, we have the mirror here. So this is also someone else, right? The emperor has been coming up a lot as far as issues with the masculine, right? And we have this war here. So that really fits in. But, you know, I'm seeing this as... Man, there's dichotomy everywhere, but I feel like it's like you are going through portals, like you, you know, whether you're consciousness, conscious of it or not, and I think you are, because you're consciously going into this mirror, right? Mirrors can serve as portals, the empty room, I'm seeing this as, you know, going into the abyss, going through this portal, and even this fault line, Right, this this tear in the fabric, this this space that you can enter through. I'm seeing portals all the way down, right? <laughs> and then I'm seeing um this this dark and light, right? Even here in the sun, we see the moon and this darkness, like you know, like I said, it's like you're um Fending off darkness here. I'm seeing, you know, these these stars. There's some stars up here in the devil, right? Right up here at the top. You know, there's that's that optimism, that holding on to hope. Um, I'm also seeing this as. You, you know, this mirror, right? Uh, but what I'm getting is that you're recognizing or you have this, you know, and it might be something that you've known, right? That us as a collective create the world that we're, that we're in, right? And it's Sleeping Beauty's dream, right? We've been so asleep as a collective, and I think you're, you're seeing how that's kind of woven, you know, because all these tangles, right? We're going to have to untangle this and wake people up. I'm also, you know, in addition to that, I am seeing, you know, with this nine of tides here in your uh, subconscious that your dreams do have a lot of messages for you at this time. And we do have a lot of meteor showers, right? We see some stars here in, in this as well. Um, so you may have seen or you might see uh, a shooting star during this time period. And those are messages from spirit, right? That your dreams are coming in. And subconsciously, of course, you know that. But yeah, I'm really getting that message. So... <laughs> Um, but I think that this dichotomy is from that Saturn and Jupiter being in your sign, right? The contraction and the expansion. It's really like playing out here with you. So, you know, we'll start here with the past with the gesture of fire. And I'm seeing this as, you know, the optimism about the future. I'm also seeing this as you, you know, looking at yourself, looking at where you might be wearing masks, um, even how your relationships in the past have shaped you and, you know, made some of the masks that we're wearing, right? That mask came out in the beginning. Take it, and that's this seven of wins as well, right? This kind of coming into your own. <clears throat> it's kind of clean slate here. And I also see, you know, I feel like, like I said, on the surface, you're just kind of keeping a poker face. 
You know, you've got all these treasures that you've been, you know, I'm almost seeing this as kind of like a stew, right? This primordial stew where you've been um, pulling out, you know, secret knowledge, right? These, um, even just exploration of of who you are, right? Where you've been hiding yourself. And I don't necessarily feel like you're um, revealing your complete self at this time. You know, there might be, you know, I think that there are some secrets that you're keeping to yourself. Maybe taking some small steps, right, towards this revelation <laughs> of who you are. Right, but there's still some exploring to do, I feel. Yeah, and that's why you're, you know, this is what you're doing, right? We have the mirror here, and we have in this uh, particular emperor card, right? This, like, and this, it's got this death feel to it, right? We're fighting the ghosts of our past, But I think, so, you know, there's this, these questions of where we've given up power, right? How we can take it back, how we can, uh, I guess it kind of unite with our divine masculine within, right? This, um, you know, he does represent the heart here, right? The fourth chakra, which we see here again, four of tides, that heart chakra, there's healing here. Right, we have this, this is the moon in Cancer, and we see this moon here, right, which is that kind of, yes, the unknown, but also, and then we have the sun here, right? Once again, we have that balance, we have balance. You know, it's just amazing to me. And... You know, even in this, we'll, we'll come back to it. Because all of these are giving me, like, double meanings. Everything's giving me <laughs> more than one meaning. Um, but we have the masculine and the feminine here in this card. Right? It's, like, crazy to me. That usually doesn't happen at any rate. But, and there's this serenity about it. But... They've got their eyes closed. The backs are to each other, right? I feel like there's this slow integration that's happening with your um, that balancing of the masculine and the feminine. <clears throat> and then below, you know, I feel like this is, you know, following the, those cracks, right? This, this uh, looking at yourself, healing, uh, this inner child, right? And you, you've you kind of, I feel like, with, especially with this justice card here, that you've, you've found it, right? This healing that's happening with your inner child. And you've found through this process that dream, right? That original dream, that purpose, right? This kind of starseed energy, who you are, what you were sent here to achieve, right? Your subconscious has found it. And I'm looking at how, you know, and this is how a matter of integrating that as well, right? I mean, look at these, the colors in her hair, and they're coming out here in the Emperor card. Very subtly, right? This subtle integration, of all the aspects of you. <laughs> Love it. Um, so yeah, here this first week, you know, like I said, I'm kind of feeling like there is a bit of craziness going on this week i mean like look how you know these bright kind of chaotic um pictures here in the first week 
what I'm seeing here is, yeah, you know, once again, seeing the conflict, right? Seeing whatever is happening, but there's also this sense of staying optimistic, right? With these stars here that you've learned, and I, I must see these as crystals, right? Being made, there's like this, this alchemy that's happening. <clears throat> Yes, you know, looking at the shadow side, but there's also this, you know, using um, the senses, right? This um, music or uh, just getting out in nature, right? I, any of these, and this, it's it's here as well, right? Um, even get just getting out in the sun and basking in the sun when you can, right? Um anything and it's definitely sensual that is staving off you know it's like the remedy to the darkness to the exploration of our darker side <clears throat> right and these this wisdom that is pulled from the darkness, right? With this bat, with an owl's face here, you know, it's like there's a reason to explore the darkness. There's much to be gained from it. And actually those explorations of the darkness help us to harness the light, right? I mean, the moon is just a reflection of the sun, and it's into you know the sun is dark here and the moon is bright right the moon is brighter than the sun in this picture <laughs> or at least this one right and then this is your inner sun right which is really what's lighting everything up that's beautiful hmm we even have you know these two and there is this undertone of love here right we do have the lovers here the bottom of the deck hmm. huh there could be you know some communication coming in you know for some of you yeah because we have the fool with wow that's really beautiful energy underneath there <laughs> right this can even be like um Thinking about a soulmate connection. They're coming in kind of like upside down, right? This might be kind of like more on the inner planes. You know, this, they've got their backs to each other here. Yet they're both serene. It's like they're feeling into each other, right? I'm even like looking at these trees, this growth towards each other here. <clears throat> So perhaps, perhaps, if it resonates, right? And this, for others, this can just be about that <clears throat> balance between the feminine and the masculine. Beautiful. Yeah, this is uh, Saturn energy here. But you're just handling it. Handling it like a boss. <laughs> Um, so yeah, then we have, yeah, I'm really getting like, of course, just that balance that's coming in the dark and the light. There is this, you know, karmic justice that's happening, right? And this could definitely be, you know, oh yeah. I'm also getting with this, okay, we'll get to that in just a second. But yeah, this clearing of karma, right? Things kind of, the, the connecting the dots, right? We've been going through this exploration of the self and it's like the pictures, you know, puzzle pieces coming together. And it's really bringing you to this place of balance and serenity. You know, this is a number eight, and we have this eight fire in the future, right? We have three fours, 
this is a four. This fault line is a 49. It breaks down to a four. So that heart chakra, right? There's this balance. Um, I really get this. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of action that you're taking at this time. I think, you know, for the most part, this is just like exploration planning. But... You know, we can, and we do have this eight of fire, which is things picking up in the future. You know, starting to make the take those steps. But I do think that, you know, I think there might be, you know, that where there might be some injustice that's happening over here. There might be some advocacy on your part, right? Um, you know, he's got these boxing gloves here. We've got this war, this, you know, emperor here ready to take charge, take action, and justice here, right? And this is all connecting. So it might be that, you know, you're fighting for justice in some way or planning that in real life. Yeah, because you're, you know... It's something that you you're dissatisfied with, right? Something that's that's not completely right, and you're ready to set it to rights. So yeah, integration, um, integrity, right? It's like there's this, um, you know, we have where. Someone may have done something wrong, setting things right, right? Um, just this beautiful balancing, this uh, going within and and being able to use that that recharge out in the world to spread light. It's really gorgeous. And then, yeah, in the future, right? It's like what's been stewing here, right, under the surface, ready to release. Things speeding up, possibly some communication, right? Beautiful. All right, let's get a piece of art or Aquarius, please. Art for Aquarius, art for Aquarius. Yeah, I just want to open it. Look at that. I mean, like, everything is, is, is crumbling, and I see this is you, right? Looking down on everything, knowing exactly what needs to be done, right? Where to... It's like you're looking at from this higher perspective. Making plans. How are we going to pull this all together? <laughs> and then we have Madonna with the long neck, which is speaking, right? Something that needs to be shared. And there's this motherly energy about it, right? This this um, nurturing energy. And I'm just pulled to this one who is like looking so lovingly, right? I think you'll have admirers, people looking up to you. And yeah. This is like, this is like some crazy little figure down here and it's got um, a scroll. So holding that secret knowledge. Ah, and we have this column here in the background connecting the two, right? This new world, right? This one's old and crumbled and this is how, creating the new. Well, it's not crumbled, but it's it's been burnt, and <laughs> it's all that left that's left, right? It's like we're we're cleaning it up. This is that pillar, pillar of truth, right? This what we're searching for here. That's beautiful. All right. Okay, closing guidance. Kind of feel like I'm I'm drawn to the Davis of creation here, so we'll go with it. 
beautiful. We've got rebirth at the bottom of the deck. Started off. For Aquarius, please. Closing guidance for Aquarius. That's bothering me. <laughs> Closing guidance for Aquarius, please. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Number 71 at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> and this is um, the seed void. This is the very last card in the deck. It's like that alpha and omega, this like place of where we throw everything that we've learned into the void to create something new. Beautiful. What do we have here? The witness. Yeah. And look, another star, <laughs> another shooting star here. <clears throat> so this is the air element. And I feel like, you know, this is them kind of giving you like, you know, yeah, y'all are, are ruling now. <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, you're ruling now. Right, this is like where we're moving into this age of Aquarius, <clears throat> and of course, this is you know a uh, work in progress, of course, but yeah, and this is also about you know getting out outdoors, right? This, this, what we were talking about here, getting fresh air, you know, and I'm just like looking at this how much they uh, work in conjunction here. Getting outside, getting fresh air, enjoying nature, right? The uh, breath work, right? Um, all these things are what's going to kind of keep us fresh and moving, right? Uh, during this time period. Yeah, any time chance that you get to like uh, any day that it's like semi warm, there's like sun coming through the window and it gets fairly like warm in here, I'll open up a window just to get some fresh air in. All right, it's stuff like that. Just kind of clear the energy. And then we have the witness here. And this is, you know, about there being turmoil all around us and just bearing witness to it, knowing that everything's going to be okay. It's all going to calm down at some point in time. This is also telling me that, um, yeah, right now might not be the best time to make moves, to just stand steady, watch for signs right watch for sign that will maybe it is a shooting star <laughs> when to take action which looks to be in the future here i'm loving how underneath you know this we have these billowing clouds in both of these right it's like <laughs> sitting underneath it but it this is actually moving up here. Hmm. Cool. All right, let's take a look at the underlying energies. Hmm. I mean, just look at that. And then underneath that is Oh Sunny Day, right? This juxtaposition of the day and the night, the sun and the moon, Ugh, just drives me crazy. The red and the blue, ah, it's so gorgeous. Ah. Yeah, I'm just seeing 
you know, this elixir of life, once again, with this, this devil card, right? It's like getting into those, those senses, getting outdoors as much as possible, right? It looks like her wind is blowing through her, her hair, even on those, you know, I don't know where in the world you are, but you know, it's like, we even, you know, on, on the cold days, you know, there's, there's still that enjoying that bite in the wind, right? The strength of it, that, you know, invigoration, right? No matter where we are, what circumstances we, we are in, we can appreciate the power, the sweetness, right? All these, um, and even get messages about what's going on in the world from that right messages carried on the wind <laughs> buy yourself some flowers right like just little ways of building that energy of allowing yourself to and then study them right look in, inside of them and all the different parts feel of the petals right it's like just really get you know and it doesn't you know, i'm just using a flower as an example but it's really getting to how one thing right like a flower can really like enliven all the senses And that is very much this Vasily Kandinsky as well. Hear music through sight, right? It's like, how can we intermingle all of the senses? It's like this beautiful exploration of our world in a different way. <clears throat> And this love, right, it's, it's definitely connected to this justice with the, the pixelation, right? Getting uh, the pictures starting to come together. And I get computer keys from this, right? There might be some uh, communication, right? Gemini is the sign of communication. Uh, through... Um, gosh, I can't think of, I, I was doing really well, guys. <laughs> I did really well with yours, being able to find the words I was looking for. Uh, but, uh, through computer, right, uh, digital means. And then the, these highs and lows, right, and just finding that balance, right, it's going to keep, there's, go, there's like, um, that cycle, And once again, you know, we've got this sun and moon, light and dark, and this um, connection between the two. This, this inner truth, right? That column, that pillar of truth that we're finding it, right? And it might just be this, this crazy moment where it all kind of just comes together. P the pieces come together and, you know, it's like, ah, oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, this is, has been very interesting, Aquarius. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for such an interesting reading and um, much respect. All right, guys, I am going to leave you here. I hope it was helpful. I hope it resonated. And until next time, much love.